During our recent visit to Fort Craig, the volunteer in the visitor center made sure to remind me the battlefield of Alverdi was actually accessible. Due to the heat and time of day, we did not make the journey to the battlefield, but it sparked my interest. So for this episode, we will look at the Battle of Valverde, fought February 20 and 21, 1862. Valverde is a great example that battlefield success does not always translate into victory. Colonel Edward Camby had concentrated his forces of U.S. regulars and New Mexico volunteers, a force of about 3,000 soldiers at Fort Craig. Located along the main water source in the region, the Rio Grande, Henry Sibley's rebel invasion force had to neutralize this enemy force, which was numerically superior. In addition, Camby had important supplies that Sibley needed to make the invasion successful. As Sibley advanced on Fort Craig, Camby prepared the fort's defenses, building earthworks to the south. As the rebel troops drew near, Sibley had his first glimpse of the outer works and realized his men would not be able to take the fort in a frontal assault. The odds were always against an attacking force when dealing with a fortified enemy. Sibley hoped to lure Camby out of his fort and even the odds as a result. Therefore, Sibley deployed his man for three days to present an inviting target. Camby did not take the bait and Sibley faced the dilemma. Supplies were running low and he had to either attack or leave Fort Craig with its large garrison in his back a major threat as he moved up the Rio Grande. After consulting his officers, Sibley ordered his troops to cross the Rio Grande and swing around Fort Craig to the east and then to the north. They were to cross the river again and cut communications between Canby and Santa Fe. The last stretch of the advance would be behind Black Mesa hiding the movement from U.S. eyes. The surprise failed as Camby had anticipated the move and prevented the rebels from reaching the Rio Grande, forcing them in this desert environment to camp overnight without water on the night of February 20. An explosive mule assault failed to yield the result of eliminating enemy pickets, but stampeded a herd of beef cattle and horses into the U.S. line making the rebel provisioning issue even worse. After a harsh night, Sibley sent on the morning of February 21st a small force towards Valverde Fort. Camby scouts quickly discovered the move and allowed the U.S. commander to dispatch a force under Colonel Benjamin S. Roberts to meet the enemy. With the slow-moving infantry and artillery, Roberts decided to unleash the cavalry ahead to secure the fort. Aware of the precarious situation, Canby ordered additional forces in the direction of the fort. Most of the force 
moving to contest the rebels, were untested New Mexico volunteers. U.S. forces won the race and blockaded the rebels from crossing Valverde Fort and also getting access to water. However, their commander did not take advantage of the situation and pushed the Texan rebels back. As a result, U.S. artillery remained on the west bank of the Rio Grande, putting them at a potentially disadvantageous position. However, as the rebel forces were largely equipped with short-range weapons, such as shotguns and howitzers, they could not engage the enemy at a distance anyways. Both sides had reinforcements arriving. Camby himself came to the battlefield with the vast majority of Fort Craig's garrison. He deployed his men across the river, with only the first and second New Mexico volunteers remaining on the west bank as a reserve. Afternoon, the remaining rebel troops arrived on the battlefield. U.S. forces had the advantage, preventing the rebels from reaching the river and much-needed water. Colonel Thomas Green received command of all rebel forces from Sipley and authority to attack as he saw fit. At 2 p.m., the 5th Texas charged what they expected to be inexperienced New Mexico volunteers, but that group turned out to be Colorado volunteers who held their position. After their failure on the extreme U.S. right, fighting continued, and by 4 p.m. Canby decided to attack the enemy left, assuming a frontal assault unlikely to succeed. After a few shifts to the line, including bringing the first New Mexico across the river, Canby was ready, but he had weakened the center of his line. It was the center that Rebel Colonel Green ordered forces under the command of Major Scurry to attack. Arranged in three waves, the 750 men attacked, motivated by a desperate need for water. The rebels were successful, and with other rebel forces attacking on the U.S. left, Camby's line collapsed. A brief halt in the fight to collect wounded and dead soldiers from the field allowed Camby to reorganize his men and retreat towards Fort Craig. The road to Santa Fe lay open, and the rebels had gained access to water. But their victory was costly, and meant little in the great scheme of things. There was no chance his man, with a little food available, could besiege Camby's garrison. Therefore, Sibley decided to move on to Albuquerque and Santa Fe, having suffered significant losses in horses and men. The battlefield today is unmarked, and with the changing course of the Rio Grande, it is difficult to exactly pinpoint the location of the battle, as many battlefield maps are vague in nature. There's road access from Fort Craig and Interstate 25. Neither the state nor BLM owns the land of the battlefield, and it's not protected at this time, something that may be worth considering in the future. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.